It's just bringing me back to my like teenage, teenage bear. This song is so nostalgic and was the anthem for a certain political Ooh. time when I was growing up. Bad. But this is often an argument. Does Billy Joel Armstrong have a good voice? Well, let's give him a listen. Oh, they've got confused. <laughs> Not him. Like He's certainly a performer. It's so funny you can hear the British accent. The English accent. Okay, before we get into this, I'll rewind back and we can have a listen, but he does something really interesting with his voice. He sings as if I walk alone, I walk alone. I walk alone, I walk alone. He sings with both nasality and a really low larynx, which gives him this really distinctive, unusual tone. Now, this is something that is probably really natural to him. You can hear his accent in his singing as well. And it's probably where he naturally speaks. I woke up around 6 a.m. For most people, this might cause some problems. The low larynx is interesting because it adds a depth and a warmth to his voice. The nasality, that's the air coming up through his nose, quite literally, is giving him this really punchy sound. So you have this duality to his voice that is both heavy and bright at the same time. And that doesn't happen that often with people. People tend to go towards one or the other. <laughs> his diction is great as well. Which is weird for a rocker. It almost gives him that... That placement between the nose and the low lungs almost sounds as if he's really stuffed up and he's got a cold and some, some of us might get that sound by being a little bit stuffed up. And it's an interesting tone that you can play around with. Everyone uses their voice in different ways. Everyone has different anatomy, things that feel good to them and this is often why I have an issue with courses for example singing courses are difficult because everyone's voice is a little bit different everyone's voice reacts differently to singing and almost a hundred percent of the time with my students the student will have something that does not go by the book and i've realized that it really is down to your body and finding what works for you and there are things that generally work for most people but because our instruments aren't the same you have to adapt and, and find an individual person's version of healthy singing and expressive singing. That must be so cool to hear all those people singing your song.
<laughs> okay, before we get back into it and the play the next section, I wanted to talk about where this song came from and it's kind of a roundabout story. Billy Joe Armstrong saw that phrase, Boulevard of Broken Dreams, under this picture of James Dean. Now, this isn't actually the name of the painting. It is part of a series. Boulevard of Broken Dreams is actually this famous painting by Gottfried Helwein, depicting Marilyn Monroe, Humphrey Brogart, James Dean and Elvis Presley hanging out in a bar. And that painting is a parody of a painting called Nighthawks by Edward Hopper. But Billy Joel Armstrong saw that original painting that I showed you. That's a bit of a roundabout story. But he thought, that is a great name for a song. And he wrote this song. This is England, baby. Ooh, I don't know what that was. Maybe just a technical issue. Oh, that's interesting. He used uh, a false chord distortion there. We're all so alive! Ah! <laughs> you know, uh, that sort of sound is really different placement than he's using normally and he can go there, which is interesting because that is basically the core of your Christina Aguilera hey! or your false chord metal sound <gasps> or Tibetan throat singing, which I can't do an example of. That's pretty tiring for your voice. So that scream, it sounds really cool. That's quite tiring. Although it is possible to make sounds like that and it'd be healthy. That didn't sound like a particularly healthy one. That sounded like a little bit wearing on the vocal folds. There is a little bit of tension. He's kind of doing it on purpose. It makes sense because it adds that grit. It adds that punky sound to it. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. And he's using a lot of glottals, which are... Uh, at the start of the phrase. So things like glottals and that tension can really add something to your expression, but I would beware because it's just really tiring. And I wouldn't even say get rid of these sounds. It's punk rock. You're not gonna get rid of those sounds. But I would limit the amount of use of them if you were gigging night after night after night because your voice is just gonna get really tired. <laughs> Uh. To be fair, he's switching between uh with the glottal and uh with a simultaneous onset. It's a fancy word, but it's where the breath and the sound happen at the same time. But there is a narrowing, a bit of compression, and I think a little bit of tension. And does that make him a bad singer? No. It makes him a singer that might get a little bit tired after doing a gig and his voice being a little bit tired and it might affect his longevity as well but is he performing in a way that's making thousands and thousands of people really happy and really enjoying his music and is he making people feel which i think is the sign of a great singer then i would say absolutely <laughs> I'm not 
not sure if anyone who goes into punk goes into punk for longevity. Unfortunately, actually, because a lot of this music we want to be hearing for a very long time. It's just bringing me back to my like teenage, teenage death. And I did go see them live. And I did have very bad trousers. I was cool. Is Billy Joel Armstrong a good singer? Well, from my point of view, the answer is unequivocally yes. Before you go, I have just released my very own album. Some of the songs are available here on YouTube, some are on Spotify, and the whole album is available from my website. I'd love if you would go and check it out. But for now, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.